Welcome to our discussion on sets. Let's start off by looking at an example. All right, so the first thing you need to understand is just some basic um, syntax and symbols. I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, the squiggly little brackets, meaning uh, sets, you know, something inside these brackets is a set. So here's a set of numbers, one, two, three, and four. But you might not be familiar with this vertical line. That vertical line basically translates as the phrase uh, such that. So this is read the set of all x's, right? Because this first little thing tells us we're going to make a set of what? We're going to set of x's such that, and then it gives a rule, such that x is a natural number less than five. This is called set builder notation. It's just a way of basically describing a set. And we know that natural numbers less than 5 are 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you didn't know what a natural number is, a natural number are what sometimes are referred to as the counting numbers. They're the, the positive integers. So you don't have fractions, you don't have negatives, you don't have 0. Right? So natural numbers are 1 and above integers only. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They're the counting numbers. Right? If you were to count, you would use whole numbers. So the second one, the set of all x's such that x is a state that borders Florida. And of course, if you know anything about geography, you know that only Alabama and Georgia border Florida. So that would be your set. Okay, a subset is just a set of elements that are all within another set. And we use this funky little symbol. It, it kind of looks like the uh, less than or equal to symbol, right? less than or equal to. And it kind of makes sense because a subset is a set of elements that are going to be less than or equal to the other set, right? So we curve it off, you know, because we're now talking about uh, sets. So A is a subset of B, provided that everything that is in A, right, all elements of A are also in B. So a very um, simple thing would be all of the positive or all of the even sorry all of the even natural numbers are a subset of the natural numbers right because the the even natural numbers are two four six eight and so on and so forth right and then the natural numbers are one two three four five you know right so the evens and the odds so a subset is just something that where every element is in the other so let's look at one other thing one two three right is a subset of 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? But what about is 1, 2, 3 a subset of 1, 2, and 4, right? Two of them are in there, but because 3 isn't in the set on the right, then it is not a subset, okay? And last but not least, let me ask you this one. Is this true? Is 1, 2, 3 a subset of 1, 2, 3? By the way, this horrible chicken scratch, this is my way of making those curly brackets. Okay, so is 1, 2, 3 a subset of 1, 2, 3? Well, according to the rule, the, the thing on the left is a subset of the thing on the right if, right, every element in the set on the left is also an element of the set on the right. So if we want to label them, right, so this is, this is set A and this is set B, are all of the elements of A also in B? And you go, yeah. They're exactly the same. So that tells us every set is a subset of itself, which brings us to our first set of rules. Every set A is a subset of itself, and then the empty set is a subset of A. That symbol means empty set. It means the set with uh, no elements. And it makes sense that the um, empty set is a subset of every other set because every element in the empty set is in the other set because the empty set doesn't have any elements, right? So it's kind of one of those silly rules. Next, we know that a set of n distinct elements has 2 to the n subsets. And that just means that if you have a set made up of, let's say, 5 distinct, meaning different elements, then the number of total subsets of that set would be 2 to the 5th. And if you do the math, 2, 4, 8, 16, that'd have 32 subsets. That's a lot of subsets, right? So if we look at, let's look at a much simpler example, something that we can actually do here that wouldn't take us an hour and a half to talk about it. Let's say that A is the set uh, 1, 2, and 3. So we know that it's got three elements, right? And so 2 cubed is 8. 
it should have eight subsets. Well, we can start very you know, quickly listing them all out. Let's list the subsets of size one. Well, you have subset one, two, and three. I'm not going to put squirrely brackets around this because it just takes too long. So that's all the subsets of, of size one. Okay, how about size two? You can have one and two, one and three, or two and three. What about, um, you know, two and one? Well, isn't two and one the same thing as one and two? Right, so you can't, you know, order doesn't matter here with, with sets. One, two, three is the same thing as three, two, one. Okay, so that's all sets of size two. All right, how about um, sets of size three? Well, one, two, and three. There's just one of them. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm, we need eight. What's the eighth subset that we're not thinking of? Well, remember our rule, the subset is a, or sorry, the empty set is a subset of all sets. So we have also the empty set. And there are the eight possible subsets of the set one, two, three. Okay, for any sets A and B, if A and B are disjoint, that just means their intersection is the empty set, right? So disjoint means they have nothing in common, they don't overlap. This little funky upside down U means the intersection, which means, you know, the overlap or what do the two sets have in common. And then, of course, we now know that that means the empty set. So uh, think of it as something like um, if you know anything about a deck of cards, um, let A be the set of all the hearts, right? The cards that have hearts on them. And let B be the set of all cards that have diamonds, On them and we know that if we take the overlap right the intersection of those two sets because they're disjoint they're gonna be the empty set but what about if we looked at C which were um, all face cards and again if you're not a degenerate gambler and you don't know what face cards are they're just jacks queens and kings and there's three of them in each of the four suits right so there's a jack queen and king of hearts diamonds spades and clubs so if we did a intersect c we're now going to take all the hearts and intersect them with the face cards and you end up just getting um, you know jack of hearts queen of hearts and king of hearts those three cards that's what the intersection of those two sets would be, right? So intersections aren't always empty. They're only empty when the two sets are disjoint, which is a fancy word for meaning they have nothing in common. All right, lastly, let's talk about some operations on sets. So we can let A and B be any sets we want. And then U, we normally let that signify the, the big universe that these sets are, are living in. So if you want to think about it, you could let U be um, you know the entire deck of cards from our previous example and then a was a you know a set inside those deck of cards a were all of the hearts right and then b was another set that was in this universe it was all the diamonds and then pictorially we do these venn diagram things which we'll talk about in another video but they look like this right and we put a, a big rectangle to be that's our universe that's you and then we put circles in here to represent our sets so this picture here this circle represents a and then everything that is not in a that's in our universe so the whole rest of everything in our universe is a complement that little dash means the complement of a and it basically just means all the x's such that x is not an element of a right this little symbol here means element right so x is an element of our universe but it's not in a so again if a was from our previous example the set of all hearts and we were still using the universe of you know a regular deck of 52 cards then the complement of a this kind of shaded area would be all the cards that weren't hearts right so it would be all the diamonds clubs and spades okay the intersection of a and b a intersect b right is a set of all x's such that x is in a and x is in b so it's just those things that are in both sets and as we saw in my previous example um, right, if A were hearts, and in this case, if B were the face cards I was talking about, then this little football shape would be the three face card hearts, right? The jack, queen, and king of hearts. And then the union of A and B, where we now flip it over, it looks like a U for union. 
that's the set of all x's such that x is in A or x is in B or it's in both, right? So you get the entire MasterCard symbol, right? You get both circles. So it's everything that A and everything in B. So again, if we go back to uh, A is hearts and B is um, face cards, the little football here are the three face guard hearts, but out here are the other face cards, the jack, queen, and king that come from the diamonds, the spades, and the clubs, right? And so that's what would be in those two hoops, so to speak, and then out here would be all the other stuff. Okay, so those are the basics of sets.